Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Woolly Thistle Shop Update here on YouTube. Thanks so much for joining me. If you're just finding the Woolly Thistle, you're very welcome and I hope you enjoy what we have on offer. And if you're a returning viewer um, or if you're coming over from the audio podcast, thank you so much for checking us out and for uh, coming back time and again. Uh, it's really good to do this and connect with you through this channel so and thank you so much too for the comments you leave um, uh, there was a lot of comments this last episode which is always really fun uh, to read them and actually I think Maggie was the bona fide star of the show wasn't she <laughs> I thought it'd be fun for you to meet Maggie who many of you know through our Ravelry group because she's in there a lot uh, helping me run uh, the Mitten Cal and uh, it was really great to have her on and I think we'll be able to get her on again so um, stay tuned for that but thanks to Maggie for um, making everything fun she really is a lovely lovely person who is super fun <laughs> to be with um, so yeah thanks for watching and um, please do subscribe to the Willie Thistles channel give us a thumbs up as well that helps people find us and it's most appreciated uh, that you do that um, and definitely join our newsletter, which you can find at thewoollythistle.com. Two L's always in woolly, which is the British way to spell it. Um, and I am from Scotland. I don't know if I've ever really taken the time to explain myself <laughs> or reintroduce myself. So maybe we'll do that right now, um, quickly though. Um, I grew up in Scotland. I was born there in Edinburgh and uh, my family are all still in Scotland too. They're uh, up in Inverness. <clears throat> and uh, going to the Edinburgh Yarn Festival has been a highlight uh, for me because it means I can do a little business and also visit my family um, in March, which is much nicer than uh, New Hampshire typically is in March. So I've been enjoying getting away, but of course there's no Edinburgh Yarn Festival this year. So I am not there, I am here. Um, and I'll talk more about that later. But anyway, um, yeah, so I'm Corrine. I came over to the States when I was 23, which is a long time ago now. Been here, must be 27 years this year. And um, I only came over for three months, <laughs> uh, but I actually started going to school here. And during that time, I met my husband. Uh, we fell in love very quickly and we were married within eight months. I remember a professor asking me if I was marrying him for my green card. And I'm happy to say that 25 years later, in fact, our 26th wedding anniversary is this month. We're still together. <laughs> And I am a US citizen and I didn't even have to be married to uh, become a citizen because I'd been here so long it turns out. So so yeah, um, I came for three months and I stayed. Uh, you know, New Hampshire and Vermont are very much my home here in the States. And uh, I love the States, I love the United States and I love Scotland and the UK. Um, and of course, without getting any uh, political about it um, you know the world is a crazy mess right now for all kinds of reasons and you know I think we're all just hanging on to our knitting aren't we to help us get through these crazy times so thank God for knitting I think knitting has always been a companion um, I learned to knit when I was very young about probably six or seven and we knitted on very long pins my mum taught me and you would tuck the pin right up under your arm and then you could use both hands to do the uh, the actual knitting and of course I learned right-handed which is the English version I came to find out a few years ago I didn't know there was any other way to knit than the way I knew how to knit and uh, I could get quite fast with these long pins. I'd never seen circular needles or anything, although they must have been around, or maybe people did lo long DPNs to get those uh, Icelandic yoke sweaters, because those were really popular when I was probably 12 years old, I remember them. And, uh, but no, I never, I never figured out how to knit that particular, um, I never knitted to learn in the round. I always knitted flat. And I remember I was able to master the, the patterns of old that were very terse in their language, uh, very short instructions. Uh, you had to understand what they meant. There was no holding your hand. And I think um, 
that's what's really, really accessible now is that designers are using really good language that helps knitters uh, get through the stages of the pattern and without freaking out or without actually having to know someone who can read those old patterns. So coming from the old country as I do, I did know how to do that. I did have my mum to show me or neighbours or whoever and, um, and to figure out what it meant. And uh, even now, occasionally, I will see a pattern that says, you know, do this and at the same time do that, um, which can get people in a pickle pretty fast. Um, yeah, so anyway, I, I knitted as a kid and by the time I was a teenager, I was knitting garments. I remember a bobbly cabled type uh, vest, cardigan vest without sleeves though, um, in purple. It was very bobbly. Um, I remember knitting that on holiday and I also remember knitting um, <laughs> a Miami Vice inspired colorway anyway it was pinks and blues and yellows and white um, intarsia diamonds starting at the shoulders going all the way down with these huge diamonds uh, on a acrylic base and with bat wing sleeves so the rows started here you worked all the way along did your intarsia and then went all the way over here oh my god it must have taken forever and I knitted it flat um, but yeah I mean I was doing intarsia at 16 and there's nothing really magical about that I think sometimes things like sticking and intarsia and other things become mystified but I think too that designers now make knitting so much more accessible than in the olden days when I learned which is which is good so yeah, that's a bit about me. I am from Scotland. I was born in Edinburgh. I grew up outside Glasgow and um, a, a, few area, a few different places around the Glasgow area though. And then, um, then I moved to England and lived in the Midlands in Warwick and in Lamington Spa for a couple of years before heading off to the Channel Islands where I lived on Jersey for a crazy year. That was mental, we had a really good time. And then I came over to the States and uh, you know, I was on my world tour basically, but um, it kind of stopped <laughs> right there in Vermont. So um, yeah, so that, that's me. Um, and I am so glad to be uh, here and doing my knitting and um, running the woolly thistle. It's, it's a charmed life and I appreciate it. So, okay, if you want to know anything about me, I'm sure you can ask in the comments um, and I will, I will try to answer you. But yeah, anyway, that's a long intro and I'm sorry about that. But you know, I am aware that I don't really talk a whole lot about my origins in knitting or being from Scotland. So there you go, now you know. All right, so let's see. Also, yes, back to the, back to the notes. Uh, follow us on Instagram at thewoollythistle.com, two L's and woolly. And uh, yes, join our newsletter. That way you get to um, know everything that's going on here. Um, and then these uh, shop updates too uh, serve as an update. So what am I wearing? Well, you've seen all this before. Um, this is the Fula Snood, which is designed by Donna Smith of Shetland. And this was um, a pattern in Shetland Wool Week 2018, knitted in Jameson and Smith. I love this. Uh, you've heard me talk about it many times, I don't doubt. And um, it's a big long one, see it's really long. And so I can wear it like this, and I do. I wear this all the time like this. It's so comforting and uh, very warm and soft. Uh, really enjoyed this. It was a very um, easy uh, stitch pattern to remember and um, took eight balls of Jameson and Smith, which must be 200 grams of wool, half and half. So yes, I do sell kits. Uh, these are in the shop now because we got our Shetland Wool Week back in stock, well, at least for 17 and uh, 2018. 2019 is sold out again, so I'll be putting an order in for more of that. And uh, as soon as we can, we'll get them back on the shelf. Now this cardigan gets a lot of love. Thank you for that. Um, 
This is the, I call this my Norwegian Star Cardi because it uses the Norwegian Star. And this was designed by Donna Kay, who is Tree of Life Knitter on Instagram. And Donna, you know, you all know this story. I was looking to knit this exact, uh, exact cardigan because I'd seen someone wearing it on Instagram, and I'll put a picture here. And I couldn't find a pattern for it. So I reached out to the person uh, who is Blackbird Goose, who was wearing it and asked her, you know, where did you get it? And she told me the Swedish shop that she had bought hers from. And it was very expensive to buy off the shelf, but it was exactly this. And so I was lamenting that, that I couldn't find the particular um, design that I wanted. And Donna Kay very kindly swooped in like a knitting fairy godmother and said, tell me your measurements, I will design one for you and you can knit it. So she did, she swooped in, I, I gave her my measurements and then within a couple of weeks, I had basically a one page pattern of how to do this and I followed her directions and, um, and here it is. There. It's lovely, it's really, really lovely. And it came out exactly like I wanted it to. However, there is no pattern for it, which is a shame. Um, I think that if she were to release it, uh, that would be wonderful. But I have not been able to contact her. So Donna, if you're watching this, <laughs> get in touch with me and see, see about maybe if, if you want to make this um, a public design because I know people really really love it and um, yeah now I don't know if Donna watches so we'll see what happens but there you go it's um, it's really a lovely piece and to follow on from the last episode where I was showing you my steaks here is an unfinished and un uh, what's that word reinforced because as you know I use the right wool and then I don't need to do any reinforcing. So this is the, this is part of my steak stitches. Now, part of why steaking works, and if you get your head around this, you'll feel much better if you haven't steaked. But part of why steaking works, think about this. When you're knitting and you drop a stitch and you're using very um, kind of silky yarn or merino or something like that, when you drop a stitch, it'll go brrr, all the way down. Does it ever want to go this way? It never wants to go this way. It wants to go down, up and down, and down, not even up. So you get your ladders this way. You don't get ladders this way. It's not natural for wool to want to unravel this way. It's this way. It's not that it's unnatural for wool to unravel this way, it's knitting. It's not natural for knitting to want to unravel Ver uh, horizontally. It wants to go vertical. So that's why you can cut your knitting and have it not, I mean I am really like trying to get a piece to come undone. And I don't want to mess it up. I mean I don't want to be too cavalier but at the same time this goes on and off. Um, all the time. All right, so here's my sleeve because I did stick stitches here. <laughs> and you can see, I just wanted to wear it. Um, so I've got these big tack stitches holding the stick back in place. But that was a stick. And then I had to sew the arm in there. Right, so I hope that I'm giving you the sense that you don't have to be overly brave to do a steak. That's not to take away from anyone who is brave for doing the steak in the first place. But I think what you need to, what you need to understand if you're new to steaking is that the wool, if you use the right wool and if you reinforce it just to be careful, you're going to be fine. You're going to be absolutely fine. I did reinforce my first steaks. Um, 
because I, you know, I wanted to. I wanted to be absolutely foolproof. And actually, I, I dug out some old swatches I'd knitted and I cut them up. And, you know, I reinforced them before I cut them up. And I have a, a way that I like to reinforce that I haven't seen anywhere else. Um, and it comes from a woman called Deb, who used to own a yarn shop locally. She taught me how to steek. And she came up with um, her own method, which I have adopted as, uh, as how I would like to reinforce my steeks. But actually, even since then, you know, I'm knitting with woolly wool, I don't even need to do that reinforcement. So anyway, maybe one day I'll teach a class in that or something. I'm not sure. <coughs> so yeah, so this is my Star Cardi. It's probably my most, hmm... I'm very proud of this piece, I think is what I want to say about it. It's an all over color work design. It was a lot of color work, but I didn't get bored knitting it. Um, I'm really happy with the construction of it and that, um, that it, it looks really as nice as it does. I'm really, I love the wool. It's, it's Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weight yarn in 81 and 27 and yeah I mean I love this piece I think it's a statement piece and um, if I want to be all businesslike and go off to a meeting I t and I want to wear my wool this is what I'll wear <laughs> we have a new giveaway uh, we're going to do another $25 gift certificate to the woolly thistle because I think those are probably the best fun thing for you to get because then you can choose exactly what you want. So this time, the winner picked at random from the comments of the last episode is Denise Quinn. Congratulations, Denise, you are the winner. Let me read out what you said. She loves Daughter of a Shepherd yarns. She used Ram Jam to make a pair of Selbu mittens and they came out beautifully. Uh, she gave them to a good friend for Christmas and she says they are the warmest, softest mittens she has ever worn and she loves the shop and updates and podcasts. They always give me new ideas. Well, thank you. I am glad that you enjoy the shop and the updates and, and Daughter of a Shepherd even. So that was nice. We do have Ram Jam. I don't know if I said that or if, if, I, uh, if I do say that. So yeah, Denise, get in touch. Send us an email to info at the Woolly Thistle. Um, leave us your email address, your name, your address, and uh, we will get this out to you just as soon as we hear from you. Thanks so much. Thank you for the vanilla sweater love. Um, that was uh, my finished object maybe last time or the time before. It's a purple um, top down raglan sweater that I was using Anne Bud's book, uh, the handy book of top down sweaters. I actually have it here. Um, this is the book. So all the numbers you need are in here for knitting a variety of different sweaters in different gauges and so I knitted my um, top down sweater and I love it I knitted it in Rama finnel garn which is a fingering weight and um, you guys really loved it too and I said that I would write up a recipe for it basically um, riffing off of Anne Bud's uh, foundational work there and um, I will get that I'm almost done I will get that done but in the meantime I have been feverishly knitting another one so this is pretty much exactly the same as the purple one and but this one's going to be longer basically uh, yesterday was the school district meeting and next week is the town meeting and so I probably knitted from here <laughs> all the way down to there at the meeting. And I do love gray. And if you know me, you know that and you're just rolling your eyes right now. I, I can feel it. So yes, so this is, um, this is to be wide. It's 48 inches wide, which gives it a lot of nice uh, positive ease. And um, the one, the purple one I did had, um, it was shorter and it had a wee split hem. This one is longer and it's just going to have a very basic one by one rib. In fact, I'm casting off. I'm in the middle of casting off. So just a very short little hem that I hope will, will sit correctly once I block it. 
Um, it's knitted at a loose gauge, same as before. This is sort of my testing of the, the recipe, basically. I want to make sure that, that my instructions make sense. And um, so it's knitted on a US 6, so a very loose gauge in fennel garn. And so, I mean, already this feels really soft and nice, but once it blocks, it'll be even better. And you can see that it just has a basic crew neck and then I'll need to pick up these arm stitches and knit the sleeves. But the body's pretty much done. Yeah. So I've been knitting fairly uh, monogamously <laughs> on that and really enjoying it. I mean, I'm not bored of it, which is really nice. I think I'm craving very simple knitting right now where I can just, um, you know, just go round and round. Sometimes that's what uh, life demands of you or, or your knitting demands of you, that it be easy and pretty mindless. And so to me, this uh, sweater is definitely that. And you get a sweater. I love sweaters. I love sweater knitting. That is definitely my jam. Although, you know, I don't mind the odd accessory as well. So you saw this Last time when I was on with Maggie, this is my entry into the Mitten Cal, the Woolly Thistle Mitten Cal, which I hope you're knitting along with us. And if you are, that's great. If not, there's still time. I think you could bang out a pair of mittens. Whoops. Um, here's my second mitten, which has stalled out right where I need to put the thumb. And because, because I think I'm needing mindless knitting right now, I kind of screwed up. So apparently for the left mitten, this is the right mitten. I don't know if you see it that way. But anyway, this is the right mitten. For knitting the left mitten, you're supposed to read the chart left to right. Um, the few times I've had instructions to do that, I cock it up. <laughs> and I have here. So basically, so far, I have two right mittens. So I don't think it's going to matter overall. I just need to work out where what stitch to which stitches to put on hold for the thumb because if I follow the pattern as I'm reading it I'm going to end up with actually two right mittens so I want to just take a moment to figure out you know am I in the right place is this the right right way yeah this is the right way yeah little trees lovely trees so yeah I mean I just need to figure out the thumb which shouldn't really take that long and then I get to zoom after that and then putting on the thumbs thumbs ugh, you know I'd much rather I'd much rather be knitting a sleeve than a thumb I think just that tiny circumference but the thumbs are much smaller uh, in time as well so I really just need to go over myself and get that done all right I'm picking up all my knitting and my wool off the floor you might notice I'm in, I'm in a different place today um, I brought you out into the shop uh, because I'm having the same old problem with the light coming in the window in my office so I thought well I'll just come out here where I'm a little bit more uh, there's a little bit more solid light and we're not having the sun come in <laughs> I'm actually tied up in my yarn right so yes the vanilla sweater recipe will be with us soon I'll let you know in all the usual ways uh, when it's ready but it won't be long and then hopefully you will want to knit that as well um, it's one of those pieces that is a com you know it's a wardrobe staple you'll reach for it time and again and um, it's a very non-taxing project to knit as well which is good and maybe you know if you're getting ready to knit your first sweater this would be a really good choice for that as well all right so let's move on the mitten cal i was just telling you about my entry which are the i should tell you what they are they are the spruce sprig mittens and they're from maya's swedish mittens uh this was i think out of stock last time i think we have it back in now so that's good and um, there are beautiful, beautiful mittens in here. Just fun, fun mittens. And not all of them are color work, like, you know, very basic. If you just want to do a wee bit of texture, 
and very simple. These are so pretty. Let me get this. Look at it. It's so pretty. So yeah, so the, these, um, this is the book that I'm knitting from and it's available here at the Woolly Thistle. We're having so many uh, wonderful entries into the Woolly Thistle's Mitten Cal for 2020. Uh, just brilliant chatter going on and before I started recording I just announced uh, three more uh, prizes. I would pop in there as the prize fairy and uh, sprinkle prizes to all those chatty Cathy's who are really contributing to the fun and, um, and the kind nature that's happening right there in the Ravelry thread. So it's not too late to join our Cal if you would like to. Please do so if you would like to jump in. That's you know, and if you don't finish your mittens, that just means you're not in the running for a prize. But you are more than welcome to just come knit along with us and go at your own speed. You don't have to, you don't have to be racing um, to join us. Okay, so I want to make that clear. So that said that we don't need to race through the cal, um, and there's certainly time to join if you want to. Uh, we do have an FO thread up with over 50 pairs of mittens finished already, which is fantastic. Just such enthusiasm. And I know that some people are starting their second pair or even their third pair, which is great. If you're still working on your first pair though, so am I. And don't feel bad about it. Just enjoy the process, okay? So, um, but it's all good and it's just really fun. And that's part of the reason that I go in and do the chatter prizes is just so that, you know, we can reward everybody for knitting along and everybody's in the running for, for that kind of prize. Um, but, you know, this cowl wouldn't be as good as it is uh, if it were not for the uh, participation of the designers. They really make it special by offering discounts on their patterns and offering prices up for the end of the cowl. So uh, do consider joining us if you're not in there already and you can look at the first post on the Ravelry group and you can uh, read all, you can see there's links to all the designers who are participating. Go show them some love, that would be really nice. So yes, we're still knitting along. Hopefully I'll get Maggie back in here before we're done and um, we, can, we can talk about the progress at that time. So let's move on to the shop update. That's what we're here for. Um, I do want to mention, and I keep talking about this here and there, is that we have free shipping right now on US orders uh, of $99, which is a really good deal. It used to be $120, and now we're doing $99. So, you know, if you're in the market for some wool, do take advantage of the free shipping. Um, it's not going to stay around forever, but I'm watching it to see if I can uh, maintain it being a feasible thing, or if I can do better than that for you, I will. Um, it just uh, depends on the, um, the reaction to it. So I'm watching that, but take advantage of it now. And um, Jameson and Smith. Well, in all the time that I've been um, getting yarn in here from Jameson and Smith, it's been lovely and smooth sailing <laughs> until recently when I think we had one of our boxes go missing and it went all over the place and then it went back to Shetland. And then it had to come back and we did get it back, which was good. But in the meantime, we'd ordered more to sort of replace the one that was off on walkabout. And so now we have a lot. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we have quite a lot of uh, Jameson and Smith. So we will be doing probably between the time of recording and when this goes live on Friday the 13th, um, we will have decided about grab bags. Um, I'm hoping that we do have enough stock and even extra stock that we can do the grab bags for you, which are always popular. So the grab bags, uh, 13 balls of Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weight yarn for the price of 10. I call it my baker's dozen and um, it's a really great deal. It, the colors are picked at random. You don't have any choice in what the colors are, but you do get a great deal. And what makes this such a safe proposition is that all colors of Jameson and Smith Will work together or you know they'll work in groupings together so and also you know it forces you to have a stash of colors that you might not normally choose yourself like it left to my own devices everything I knit would probably be gray green or pink 
<laughs> and but when you get a grab bag you might you might get those colors that you really love but you're also going to get one or two that you'll go hmm I wouldn't have chosen that but you need it uh, for a color work stash so um, it's a great way to build or start your own color work star stash um, it's the wooliest of wools and is really wonderful for color work as well as sticking so it's, it's a it's a wonderful yarn and um, I'm really happy to do the grab bags. I've been dying to do, to do the grab bags, but we just haven't had enough of the yarn in to do that. So hopefully we will know by the time this uh, goes out and I will maybe have sent out an email, so be sure you're on the list. Uh, or maybe I'll put it on Instagram or put it everywhere, I don't know yet, that uh, the grab bags are live. And then you want to order your grab bag as soon as possible because indeed people do grab them. People will buy multiple bags even because they know, um, we can guarantee that if you buy two bags, you will not have two balls of the same color in those bags. So we're able to manage that. Um, if you order more than two, like if you were to order three or four bags, we probably could manage that, um, making sure that you don't have any of the same colors in there. Certainly if you're worried about it, you could make a note on your order that you would prefer not to have duplicate colors and we'll do our best so that, uh, so that we don't do that. But that's quite a feat, <laughs> but we're happy to try. Um, but yeah, definitely for two, maybe even three bags, we can do that without repeating any colors. So those are good. Those are a really good deal. We don't do them too often, but we do find that they go well. And so we're trying to do them a little bit more frequently for you because uh, we know that they're popular. Um, 52 weeks of socks update. Uh, we sold out of all of our stock. All of our pre-orders came and went back out. And we are waiting to hear, and we might know by the time this is live, um, and if so, actually, I'll put it in the show notes. If there's an update to what I'm saying, go look at the show notes. I'll put it in there. That um, we're waiting to hear if Lina will be printing more. It'll be their fourth run, I think, or fifth run um, up there. Uh, they have not told us yet that they are planning to do another run. They had decided they weren't, but now because the demand is there, they're looking at doing another run and they're looking into that and they'll let us know. So as soon as I know whether or not there's going to be more available, um, I will let you know here and all the usual ways like my email and possibly on Instagram as well. And the book is very eclectic because there's so many different designers in there, over 40 different designers. Uh, participated in that project so you've got all different kinds of designs there's color work um, there's uh, beautiful you know glossy and um, shiny and soft merino mit uh, not mitten socks in there there's lovely woolly socks the woolly mammoth contributed yarn and so her natural sock is in there and I was going to tell you or remind you that that will be coming to the woolly thistle soon so we'll actually have the sock yarn that's used in the pattern in the book um, and also we have what Tuku else? Sock. Tuku Sock. I'm looking to see it's Tuku sitting right here, but it's the Tuku fingering. Um, I think three patterns in the book call for Tuku, uh, tuku Sock. So yes, we have that here and um, that's been selling really well as it happens. Uh, yeah. So our, our yeah, book. we'll see. I have a feeling it will come back and that you will have another chance to buy your 52 weeks of socks. Um, very soon and uh, we'll put that in the shop as soon as we're allowed to if in fact it goes ahead and I don't know if they're coming back with a magazine yet they're they're looking at they're looking at everything I think themselves and coming up with a plan for what they want to do moving forward so we'll see we don't know um, it's always uh, it's always amazing to me just how different things come around um, there's so much creativity in this knitting world that we inhabit that um, th there's always stuff coming up that you just had no idea about um, until it's here. And it's just, uh, it's one of the most exciting and rewarding parts of this job is finding all the new things that are taking us by storm and um, tracking them down. <laughs> and talking of that, I've had quite a few uh, emails lately asking uh, if we would stock various books. Um, and we always look into that for you. So if there is stuff you want us to stock, 
Um, there's always a good reason why we wouldn't stock it if we don't stock it, but we never, you know, you got to tell us what it is you're looking for, for us to, to know that, that you are looking for that. Otherwise, it's just me going, oh, well, I think they'd like that, or oh, I think they'd like that. Um, it's really nice when we get an email from you saying, you know, it'd be really good. I think this would fit at the Woolly Thistle. Why aren't you stocking it? Or can you look into it? And um, and we do, we look into it. And if, if it's a feasible proposition, then we move ahead with it. So let's see. Yes, the free shipping, 52 weeks of socks. Katie Greenbean is uh, coming and will be here with her pop-up shop on April 4th, which is not too far away. And we are getting ready for that. Um, probably a good time now to talk about the coronavirus. So very crazy stuff and very touch and go. Uh, at the time of recording, as far as I know, we're still moving. Uh, let's just keep our sensible heads on and um, if it turns out that we should cancel, we will certainly let you know that we're doing that. But otherwise, we are forging ahead with our event. Okay. By Hand magazine or By Hand cereal, issue 11, features Vermont and New Hampshire. Uh, that too went, went walkabout uh, in the mail, but we just received um, a new order from them and they were very good. They worked with me to replace them. So thank you for that. Uh, so we have them back in stock now and that's a really good uh, magazine. I love it. It's one of my favorites and it's definitely um, maybe nice to have it for your trip up here to New Hampshire uh, in the next few weeks. And what else do we have? Pom Pom is out in the world and we have just a few copies of that left. So if you're interested in Pom Pom, it's a really beautiful issue. Really, really lovely. I love the colors. It's all very spring. It's beautifully diverse in, in all the ways you can be. It's just great. And um, so yeah, get your Pom Pom here. And what else? Oh yes, I think I mentioned this Shetland Wool Week 2020 is out of stock right now, but we'll be getting more of that in soon. And I want to mention Making Stories magazine. Their issue three will be out at the end of March. So a couple of weeks from now. And uh, the Woolly Thistle will be selling that, of course, as well as your local yarn uh, shop, hopefully. I am the US distributor for Making Stories magazine. So if you want to get Making Stories magazine at your LYS, put them in touch with me because they can get them from me. Um, issue three is going to be really gorgeous, really gorgeous. And actually, I have some of the samples from the magazine uh, to do a little trunk show when you're here for the Katie Greenbean pop-up shop. So you'll get to see some of the beautiful samples that are in that magazine. There's many uh, sweaters in the magazine as well as accessories. They really do give you good value, I think, for for the amount of patterns and designs you get in that magazine. So yeah, um, that will be going on sale March 26th. That's when it launches. I don't know if we'll do pre-orders or not. We'll see. Um, but that is coming down the pike. So uh, be sure to get your copy either here or from your local yarn shop. But let your yarn shop know that they um, that they that they need to know about this magazine and to get in touch, and we will take care of them. We recently sold out of our Spindrift kits that didn't last long at all, even though we have a lot of it. Um, but selling kits is a fine art <laughs> because as soon as one thing goes, you know, as soon as one color goes out of stock, it knocks all the kits off, especially if that color is used in a lot of different kits. And I think that's a bit of what happened this time. Uh, it felt very truncated. I thought it would be able to continue on longer than it did, but it turned out we were short on some uh, two colors that we didn't realize we were as short on as we were. And so that threw everything into disarray. And what I did was I then opened up the, J the Jameson Spindrift just a single ball so that if you were trying to get something and you already had maybe a couple of colors and you just needed the other, that you could go ahead and do that. So yeah, we're waiting for more spin drift so that we can uh, get our kits back in the shop. Um, and my apologies for that. I felt really bad about it. I'm sorry if it disappointed you. It was not by design or strategy or anything like that. It was just reality kicking in that, that we can't always do all the things that we want to and have them run as smoothly as they do. But we will have more in and um, 
we will give you lead time to know when it's going live. And the way to find out and be on that list, go to the Spindrift page in the shop and click on the notify me link. And um, what I'll try and do is notify you that it is going to be in the shop at this time on this day. And that way you're ready and you're not getting the notice after the fact that it's gone live and, um, and already sold out because other people got there before you. I really do try to look after you. And you know, as a thank you for being on my email list, I'm gonna give you preferential uh, notice so that, um, so that you can get your ducks in a row. All right, so hopefully that will work next time. Um, I do wanna tell you about the sale. Have I mentioned the sale Yeah, I don't know. So every March, uh, the Woolly Thistle has done a very big store-wide sale that, um, that is our, we call it our uh, not at EYF commiseration sale. But this year is, there is no EYF, so it's the no EYF commiseration sale because it's so sad that there's no Edinburgh Yarn Festival this year. But I do hope that they're sitting back with their feet up and they're knitting and maybe a martini <laughs> because they would be besides themselves busy, so busy at this point. And you know, it's a year long job to put on that festival. And if you've been lucky enough to go to it, uh, you know just what an undertaking that must be. So I hope they're maybe on a desert island somewhere even right now, enjoying some sun and knitting. <laughs> They've certainly earned it. And I hope that EYF comes back next year too. There are other um, international festivals though that I want to check out. And I wonder if you are traveling around this time to a festival instead of Edinburgh. Um, Dublin is coming up in Ireland and that's a really easy flight from the east coast of the States. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. And I've never been to Dublin except the airport. Um, I've never been outside the airport and I think Dublin would be a really fun place to visit. So there's that. I think that's in May though. Perth Yarn Festival is definitely one I'd want to check out. Perth in Scotland is a lovely, lovely town and it's sort of Unless you're meaning to go there, you will bypass it on your way north from, say, Glasgow. And uh, But Perth is a lovely town and their festival is really doing good work. So that's one I'd like to go to. Um, of course, Loch Ness Knit Fest is one I'd like to go to and that's held in Inverness. Um, that's held around about September, October. And of course, Shetland Wool Week up there is in September. Um, those are more difficult for me to get away to because I think timing, the kids are just going back to school. My kids are 12 and 14, so they're still in elementary school. We have K through eight. And uh, so they're still in that. And I've just not wanted to leave them at the start of a school year. <sighs> but yes, I would like to go. So yeah, there's lots of festivals. And so maybe you are planning travel to a different festival. And if you are, please tell me where you're going in the comments. That would be a great comment to leave. Tell me what festivals you're planning to go to this year, whether in the US or um, overseas. Yeah, do tell me. But anyway, there's no Edinburgh Yarn Festival this year, but the Woolly Thistle will be putting on its sale. And if, uh, if you remember our sale from last year and previous years, you know, I try to make it a good, good sale for you. So that starts when this goes live on um, Friday, March 13th, Friday the 13th. And uh, it goes all weekend till Sunday night. And um, so do come check us out and do a wee shopping splurge while you're here. That would be lovely. I hope you find something you really want that it's on sale. Okay. So that is that. Uh, new things coming to the shop. Well, I did mention Katie Greenbean, so we'll have her stock here, including tea towels and not sure about the posters. They might be more difficult to get here at this, this time, but definitely tea towels and her books and her stamps, her lovely little stamps and various different things that, that Katie Greenbean has. The cushion covers did really well when we had them in the shop too. So we'll have some more of those. Um, her ribbon, we're getting lots of ribbon because I think we sold out of that again. So we'll have that here as well. Yeah, so good stuff coming. Um, also coming to the shop, I mentioned, what else? All right, so um, Daughter of a Shepherd is new and doing really well. We have her broom, which is her Hebridean uh, Zwarblas or Zwarbles uh, mix. It's a beautiful yarn. It's got Exmoor Blueface 
in it as well. So it's like a 50, 25, 25 blend. It's a lovely dark brown Hebridean yarn with some drape in it. Really nice. So we've got that in four ply, fingering weight, as well as DK, and we have her Ram Jam. We sold out of her book really quickly, so we'll need to get more of those back in, I think. But do take a look at Daughter of a Shepherd. It's taken us a long time to get it here. Um, so get yours while you can. Uh, also coming to the shop, I mentioned Woolly Mammoth's um, Natural Socks. So we'll have lots of that coming. And uh, we'll have the colorway available that is in the Lina book. And also there is a beautiful pattern in Making Stories Magazine 3 in her uh, sock yarn. And we will also have that colorway as well. So you'll see that when the, book, when the uh, Making Stories comes out. And then we have lots of other beautifully naturally dyed yarn colors as well. So I'm looking forward to receiving that. It's on its way as I'm recording this. Uh, what else is coming? I told you about the grab bags as well. So those will be coming. Sorry about the slamming door. Um, let's have a quick update about Marie Wallen. We still have uh, her book Gentle in stock and Wildwood. Those two books feature her British Breeds yarn and we have lots of that in stock except for the two colors that have been out of stock even with Marie. We've had to wait for things to be spun up and finished and sent back over here and as I record this I expect next week to receive um, those two colors which are wood and quince. Once those two colors are back in we'll be fully stocked again and the kits will populate. Uh, primarily the Primrose kit which is the um, cover page from her beautiful gentle book and the mistletoe tam which is in there as well and the walnut tam which is from Wildwood as well as the Hawthorn cardigan which is from Wildwood that's the cover on there so we'll have four kits populating again real soon and also individually available I'm looking because it's right here up here I'm not going to pull any out because that'll be noisy and a palaver but um, yeah so Marie Wallen British Breeds will be fully stocked uh, next week uh, which will be which will have been before you see this yeah sorry I'm trying to figure out how I can record and release with enough time to get that work done and also <laughs> stock the right way so that when I'm talking it makes sense it's a lot to think about so um, be on, be on our mailing list because that's where you will be notified um, primarily. Uh, Instagram too um, and then Facebook as well. I mean all the places but the, uh, the newsletter is where I will make a point of primarily letting people know that things are coming or they're here and then you're good to go. So by the time you're watching this, that will have all happened. There may well still be uh, kits available though because it will have just happened if it's happened. It hasn't arrived here yet and you know, you just, you can't guarantee anything, but hopefully if everything goes to plan, we'll have the yarn here, it will be in the shop. And when you're watching this, you can maybe pause and go see if, uh, if stuff's still available. <laughs> Uh, I'm working on I'm working on the streamlining of things. Sorry, it's challenging because there's so many different things here as well. Uh, the book Shetland, which features Jameson Spindrift by Marie Wallen and um, the other one is Meadow. Both of those are getting a little low in stock. I have ordered more Shetland, so that's fine. We'll have plenty of those in soon again and I'll need to get more Meadow in as well. So that will be coming. And yeah, I think that that's it. Um, we have a big Tuku order coming in soon and we had a big Blacker order coming in so we should have everything that you're looking for in Blacker. Unfortunately we don't have Mist in the Gotland colorway, I mean in the Gotland line. The Mist is the um, natural grey. I am trying to get more of that so hopefully that will be coming soon. Um, we had a quite a big stash of Jameson and Smith colour cards and as I record this there's a few left they probably won't be in the shop by the time you see this though but my point of telling you that is that we did have quite a few and it wasn't a mad dash to get them this time or as bad as it has been before and those I offer to newsletter subscribers first so in case <laughs> you don't get what I'm trying to say if you're not picking up what I'm putting down 
be on our newsletter list. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is where blacker is. This is all blacker here. And we have lots in good supply. And then further down there, we have John Arbin, uh, Knit by Numbers in DK, as well as Devonia. We have more Devonia coming because we've been out of stock of some of the, the colors. And we're getting more Knit by Numbers in as well to top that up. And coming with this order will be the Exmoor Sock Yarn, which is that brand new sock yarn from John Arbin. Um, it's revamped from before. Uh, it's one that I sold here in the shop when I was still working at home, when um, we had my family room as the, as the shop. And uh, that was one of my first yarns I ever sold. So it's coming back in uh, about 13 different colors. It's a beautiful yarn. It's a very rustic feeling yarn in the hand, at least it used to be. Um, and then when you washed it, it really softened up, but it's gonna be great for socks. So I can't wait for that to come. Yeah, so right now we've got Tuku here, Blacker, and John Arbin. So yes, also down this side over here, we have Rowan, where we've got their felted tweed, which is a DK way. It's a really good sweater yarn. And what else? Oh, we got River Knits and Old Centrum. Lovely old centrum. So, you know, this is just one aisle. We've got a couple of different spots over there, but I thought this was a nice spot that you might not have seen before. Um, and I quite like sitting in here surrounded by my wool. It's very safe and cozy feeling. <laughs> well, I think that's all the news. No, it's not. I have one more thing to talk about. It's time for us to also do our little gift of hollyhock seeds. You can see that, um, these are hollyhocks from my garden at home. These ones are black. I also have some pink ones now, so you might get black and pink in here. And yeah, there's uh, some instructions. You can also Google how to plant uh, hollyhock seeds. You can start them indoors or you can plant them right in the ground. But this is um, a wee tradition that we started last year, I think, um, where we dry the seeds um, and we have just beautiful hollyhocks. So yeah, you'll get your own little stash when you get free shipping. So just spend $99 and you'll get free shipping and we will pop this in as well until we run out. And there, oh God, there's tons. So it should be uh, pretty good. So I think that's all I have for you this time. Thank you so much for joining me. I feel like I've been very blethery. I hope that's okay. Make sure you subscribe to the Willy Thistles YouTube channel. Give us a thumbs up and um, leave a comment below telling us what um, what festivals you want to attend this year and you know whether they're international or local um, or national you know just tell me where you're going to go and where you want to um, meet up with your friends and things um, I often wonder where if anywhere the woolly thistle should be vending at so you could maybe give me a suggestion not saying I'll do it but you never know but anyway, I think that's all the news I have for you. I'll be back with you in a couple of weeks. And until then, if you go out, take your knitting. Bye-bye.